Hey guys, welcome back. In this episode, we will go ahead and continue our discussion on the segment routing. In the previous one, we kind of briefly touched upon the segment routing global block. And we kind of discussed the segment routing global block is the range of the range of the labels that you would go ahead and assign to every node. And as a best practice, Cisco recommend them to be same. So around the same topic, we'll just go ahead and explore this bit in again a little bit more detail. Again, the material I'm referencing, you can go ahead and download a copy or it can take a look at online by going to segment-routing.net. And again, all the credit goes to these guys. So without any ado, let's go ahead and take a look at what is segment routing global block a little bit in more detail now. So we had kind of touched, okay, hey, SRGB, which stands for segment routing global block. So now we'll go ahead and take a look at what is exactly segment routing global block, the benefits of using the same SRGB on all segment routing nodes, and how to modify segment routing global block. And again, how would you SRGB allocation mechanism and some of the things around the same topic. So let's go ahead and take a look at what is SRGB. So SRGB again stands for segment routing global block. It's a range of labels reserved for segment routing and these are reserved for the global segments. So we had talked about the global segment and the local segment. And the default range for the SRGB starts from 16,000 and goes to all the way 23,999. A prefix SID is advertised as a domain unique index. And we looked up in the last episode the prefix said we took a look at example of a sample topology where we had five routers. Each router was identified with a unique index one, two, three, and four, five. And we were using SRGB base plus a index. And that's why you see those were called the prefix SID. So each router had a prefix SID, like 16,001, 2, 3, and, and so on. The prefix SID index points to a unique label within the SRGB. And these index is zero based. That is first index is zero. That's why we have a 16,000. Now the label is usually is your prefix SID index plus your SRGB base. And our SRGB base is 16,000. So now here it shows, okay, here an example. Let's say this is a prefix 1.1.65 with the prefix and index of 65. So where we are saying, okay, the index value for this, I, this IP or for this node is 65. So what is the label? So the label will be, 16,000 plus 65, that is 16,065. And that's what your SRGB index ID or the prefix said for this particular IP or for this particular node. So now if you continue to take a look at, Cisco strongly recommend to use same SRGB on all the nodes. All operator ask for this deployment model. The reason it's simple, straightforward. A global segment is equals to global label value using different srgb is supported again but it complicates and we'll take a look at the example why it complicates the thing further a non-default srgb can be located between 16,000 and a million 48,575 or up to a platform limit it depends on the platform you are using and i'm using an older presentation so in the newer uh, version or newer platform this value has gone up pretty high the size of srgb should be equal to equal on all nodes Current maximum value is 64,000. And again, this needs to be equal. We'll go ahead and take a look at why this needs to be equal. Now, if you take a look at example, this particular topology. In this topology, there are four routers, one, two, three, four. And this, this says, okay, hey, these are the available label space. And the label space starts from 16,000 all the way to million. And all on these four routers. So right now, what it says, not recommended, but possible SRGB allocation, again, Cisco says, hey, do not use a different one, but that is a possibility. Now, what is the mean by that? So let's take an example where we have a prefix 1.1.1 slash 32. So that means the prefix segment index in this case is 1. Now, we discussed in the previous episode that these index or these prefix index are unique across the topology or unique into the SR domain. That means each router on will have a unique index. So in this case, let's say the index one belongs to a router one. So now in this case, if you take a look at on the first second node, we are using a default SRGB block of 16,000. On the third node, we happen to use a known standard range that starts from 
Now let's say in this case 533,000. On the router number 4, it starts again from 16,000. So now what happens when this router number 4 is trying to send something to 16,001? So in this case, okay, hey, we are using the prefix it which is unique into the domain which is 16001 with some payload. So when it comes to router number 4, router number 4 will take a look at, okay, hey, what is the prefix it for this particular router 16001? In this case, it happens to be same 16001. It'll go ahead and send this information to router number 3. Now the router number 3 needs to do a mapping and say, okay, hey, my SID, the base is in this case 533,000 and this is the prefix 1. So in this case, it happens to be 533,336. And now when it goes back to again router 2, it needs to be reconverted. So now you can see somebody needs to remember, especially when you are trying to troubleshoot, you will need to make sure, okay, hey, okay, on this router, this is my base. On this particular router, this is my base. So that is the reason, even though you can use a different sRGB block, but it's strongly not recommended. Because if you imagine, if it was also 16,000, we didn't have to take a look at or remember anything special here. Throughout the topology, we know, okay, 16,001 belongs to this. Anywhere in our FIB table or any kind of other table, when we see a reference to 16,001, that means we are referencing to this particular router. But if you pay attention here, it becomes a little convoluted. You have to remember, okay, Oh, on this special router, we are using a non-standard range. So you can see these things, this can become very complicated when you have a large network and you're trying to troubleshoot things. So that's why it's recommended SRGB block on, you need to have recommended SRGB blocks on same block across all the nodes. So that way it becomes pretty easy when you are taking a look at any of the route tables, any other thing, information. And again, here it says prefix, it has a global label value and all of these nodes have a global value. Again, recommended sRGB allocation. In this case, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, it makes life easier when you are doing any kind of SDN programming, you know. So just like in the MPLS, we have the label database. We have the similar label, label database here in the segment routing also. And if you take a look at all those different label, it says, okay, hey, label range zero to 15 is reserved and is for special purpose. Label range starts from 16,000 all the way to 15,000, uh, starts from 16 to 15,999, reserved for static MPLS label. From 16,000 to 23 triple line is reserved for sRGB and 24,000 max is your purely dynamic label. And we saw an example of dynamic label when we talked about the urgency SID labels. Those were local segments or local significance. Now, some of the things pretty much happen same. I will not go through all the slide and read again. You know, these are available for your reference on segment-routing.net. You can go ahead and read about every single slide and take a look at more detail. Again, just to go over, LSD preserves the default sRGB label range, which is again 16,000 to 23 triple nine. Also, the LSD allocates dynamic labels starting from 24,000. If the configured MPLS range includes a default sRGB label range, the preservation is simply disabled. Again, you can go ahead and read about some of these more rules. It talks about, okay, how are these being allocated and some of the other things. Now, in terms of the allocation, this is just simply in the form of a diagram. Okay, zero to 15 triple line, special purpose and static labels. This is your preserved range, which is your sRGB block. Anything beyond that are your simply dynamic labels. And again, just talks about the example here. It just talks about how the labels are being allocated and some of the other thing, how some of the things are assigned. Reservation example. Again, this is something important. Multiple IGP instance can use the same sRGB or use different non-overlapping sRGB. That means, let's say if your router is doing it, is it like has a multiple IGP instance, for each instance, it can use the same block or you can create two different block and each instance can use that unique block. Important, modifying an sRGB configuration is disruptive for traffic and may require reboot if the new sRGB is not available. So once you have configured, once you have some traffic running, uh, be careful if you're trying to modify your sRGB block, especially you might run into some kind of a disruption for your traffic. And again, once the labels are configured, you can go to your router. In this case, we are working with a Cisco iOS XR based device. 
where the command we are saying, okay, hey, show MP alias label table detail. In this case, it says, okay, hey, it's an sRGB. The label starts with the 16,000 and the size is the 8,000. So 16 plus 8,000, that's our kind of a block. So that's what it says, okay, hey, the default sRGB label block range for ISIS, that's what it shows, 16,000 to 23999. And again, the command is show MPLS label table details. How do you go ahead and configure a non-default sRGB? So you go under your IGP instance, in this case, our ISIS one, we'll go ahead and run the command segment routing global block. The range, in this case, we are starting from 18,000 to all the way to 19, triple nine. Again, we can go ahead and configure a non-default sRGB. This is just an example. Again, you can go ahead and configure, but again, it's not recommended. It's recommended to have the same sRGB block on all the nodes. Again, to see that, you will go ahead and use show MPLS label table detail. In this case, it says, okay, the label start from 18,000 and the size is really in this case, 2000. And that's kind of pretty much concludes a brief overview on the sRGB. It's your segment routing global block. And that will come pretty handy when we are working with the hands-on. So we need to keep in mind from where the, those unique prefixes are coming, how those prefixes are being assigned or configured. Or when we look at our route table or the fib table, all of these things will come into handy. So that's why it's really important that you need to know about the sRGB.